Hi everyone. This is going to be a short tutorial on how to hand embroider um, on a towel or what I'm using today is a spa wrap made out of towel material. This was a request from one of my subscribers, Tea with Danielle. I'll put her link at the bottom. She's got some really great videos if you want to check out her channel. The first thing that we're going to need, uh, of course, is embroidery floss. You can get it um, at most craft and hobby stores. You want to cut yourself a length. Embroidery floss is six strands of this thread, the floss, together. And to do the embroidery, almost all the time, I separate them into three each and you just pull it apart and then very slowly, it's all wound together, you just unwind it. It's easier to handle. I'm not exactly sure what you would use all six strands for, but um, it's very difficult to even thread the thickness of the six strands together in your needle. You'll also need a needle um, most embroidery is done with embroidery needles. They're quite fine with very, very sharp edge ends and uh, also the eyes are a little bit different. Because I'm working with a terry cloth type material plus two layers of stabilizer or interfacing, I'm doing it with a regular needle and I'm just sharpening it quite a bit. I use this little uh, strawberry thing at the end of my pin cushion and that sharpens the needle quite a bit. You'll also need scissors and you'll need an embroidery hoop. That is probably the best thing to have. You can do this without an embroidery hoop but it really is difficult to work with all of these layers and to see what you're doing uh, so it's better to get one. I actually went to a local thrift store and probably got 10 different sizes for under $1.50. This is stabilizer. It's water soluble stabilizer. So this will actually, when it gets wet, will just disappear. And I put it on the front and I have put it on the back. It keeps the nap of the the towel material down so I don't necessarily have to work with that I'll just be working with this flat surface it also helps in putting your design on now I'm just doing block letters and what I did was I went to my computer I found a font that I liked and I just printed it out and Basically, I just copied it. The best thing to do is to get like a carbon paper or a sewing tracing paper, and you can just do that. You can also use a um, sewing pencil. Wait a second, I'll get it. Sorry about that, wasn't as prepared as I thought. Uh, here are, they come in different colors. Here's one pink. Here's one white, and they have these little brushes because you can write on your material and then just brush it right away. It doesn't stay. Then here's a fancy one. It's like a felt tip pen almost, and that comes right off. You just take it, take it off with water. And all of these I've, I got like at Walmart or uh, a Joann's or a Michael's or something like that. Very easy to do. And most of the time, you're going to be, if you're using the stabilizer, even if you leave the edge, if you leave it so you can see the edge, it's going to come off. This is all going to disappear with the water. Or either use a tearaway or a water soluble so when you're done with your work, this just comes away and you can't see the mark anyway. So what I've done is I've already started. The E is finished. I've done it with fill and satin stitch. 
the V is empty, and the A, I've started to show the running stitches. And this is what you're going to do to fill it in to give it this plumped look. Now, you don't necessarily have to do that either. If you just, if you think it's enough, uh, you don't need to uh, fill the bottom to give it some height. Most likely, you're going to need to if you're going to do it on any kind of towel or velour fabric that has a nap or it's just going to fall flat and you might not even see it. So basically you take your needle and thread. You don't need to tie knots. Also, I, I have to tell you, I'm not being overly careful on the back. You can see the E. I will trim up some of these ends, but my work is not as perfect on the back as it is on the front. And that's up to you, whether or not you want to get, uh, most embroidery you never see the back, so you don't have to. Um, if you want your work to be very beautiful on the back, you're just going to have to be extra, extra careful. So you're going to take your embroidery hoop, you're going to bring your needle and thread up from the back, and I always put my finger, you're sort of looking for it with your finger. And you see the needle comes up through the work. And I'm just going to follow the thread in the back just so I don't pull it through. But I'm just going to leave it because I'll, you don't have to have a whole lot of knots. You can just uh, bind it underneath with your stitches. And then I'm just going to go back down. And these stitches are going to be hidden. They're underneath your satin stitch. So you don't necessarily have to be uh, fancy with it or clean with it. You just want to fill in that stitch to give it more body. Then the other stitch that you, and you just want to continue until you're filled. And if you can see, I've also done a running stitch all the way along the outside of this. What that, and, and again, this is controversial, controversial, it's embroidery, but some people really, really like it. Some people say you don't need it. I think it makes your work a little straighter and a little neater if you do the running stitch all the way around. And the way to do the running stitch is you come up on that line go over a little bit onto the line Then your next stitch, you're going to come up a little behind where you went in before. And you want to get your needle. And it does take a little while. This isn't, this isn't something that's going to go really fast. Bring your needle up and sort of grab that thread so it's in the middle of that thread. Pull it through and then go down again on that line. What that's going to do is make a nice little outline for you to complete the satin stitches and you just want to complete. Now the satin stitch is just basically up and over, up and over. 
So I'm going to go back into the A over these running st stitches. So I'm going to come to the side of that bottom A and I'm going to bring it straight over and go to the other side. And pull taut. Then we're going to come up right beside it and over again. And pull taut. And now you can see I didn't quite get it right next to it, so I'm going to try and get closer this time. And pull it over. There, you can see. And now what I'm going to do is just like the E, I'm going to go completely straight down here and then I'm going to, so I'm going to go straight up the A and around, then I'm going to go straight around here and around. And I'll do a couple more stitches for you. And again, you can see I went a little too high, so this time I'm going to try and get it as close. And there you can see how it's turning out. And that's basically the, the whole idea of it. Do your filling stitches, your running stitches, then your satin stitch, and uh, be in for a, a little bit of a project. This is gonna take uh, quite a while. I did the E last night, probably, and I haven't done hand embroidery in years and years and years. I have an embroidery sewing machine. Um, this is going to take a while. You might want to take more time than I did, put a little bit m more stitches in there. Um, but it, it, it does end up very nice. Okay, thanks a lot. Hope this helps. Bye-bye.